Article 370, or as some people may call the Kashmir crisis, has been a burning topic for some time now. What exactly is Article 370? Included in the Indian Constitution on October 17, 1949, the article allows Jammu and Kashmir to draft its own constitution, thereby exempting the state from adhering to common set of laws that govern the rest of the country, which basically means the Indian Parliament's legislative powers do not apply to JNK. Along with Article 370, Article 35A of the Indian Constitution also gave some special privileges to the people of the state, which was introduced through a presidential order in 1954. So why is there a hue and cry about it recently? To understand this phenomena, let us first ask why is Jammu and Kashmir controversial? The beautiful, spectacular Himalayan region of Kashmir is a place of envy for both India and Pakistan. Both countries went to war over it and they each have different territories of Kashmir under their jurisdiction with an agreed line of control or LOC. Because of Kashmir's special constitutional status, they could not make their own rules relating to permanent residency and fundamental rights. It could also bar Indians from outside the state from buying property or settling there. Some of the Kashmiri folks were not happy to live in the Indian administered side. For 30 years, the Indian part of Kashmir has witnessed continuous violence due to separatist and Pakistan-sponsored terrorism, along with military intervention. So what happened now all of a sudden? On the first week of August 2019, tens of thousands of Indian troops were deployed to JNK. Schools and colleges were shut. Tourists were ordered to leave. Telephone and internet services were suspended and regional political leaders placed under house arrest. Soon after, the government of India shocked everyone by announcing that it will revoke Article 370 and all the privileges associated with Article 35A which had been the major cause of strife between Kashmir and the rest of India for about 70 years. It argued that these rules needed to be scrapped to integrate Kashmir into the same legal and legislative structure as the rest of India. The decision was met with a huge uproar from all corners of the world. Some critics opined that the ruling parties want to change the demographic character of the Muslim-majority region by allowing non-Kashmiris to buy land there. Some say that the move was a diversion to distract Indians from the plummeting economy. Due to its special status, JNK witnessed issues related to security, terrorism, role of external actors and human rights that has also seen loss of lives of many soldiers. According to the government, the abolition of Article 370 and 35A will only bring about effective governance and development in the Kashmir region, which was long overdue. Due to the sudden way it was implemented, the abolition was bashed by social critics on a humanitarian ground as an unbiased majoritarianism. Expert opinion was sharply divided cutting off all communication lines in the valley along with putting their leading politicians into custody was an extreme decision. Many believe that it showcased despotism, while some thought that it exhibited dominance over the frequent terror attacks by Pakistan. Constitutional expert A.J. Nurani told BBC that it was an illegal decision akin to committing fraud. Whereas Subhash Kashyap, another constitutional expert, told news agency ANI that the order was constitutionally sound. An article by Amnesty International read, so far the government's response to dealing with the protests in the state has been heavy-handed and have led to gross human rights violations, such as blinding, killing and traumatizing people over the past few years. If we can look at the abolition from a constitutional angle, we can see that 
JNK's constitution never mentioned the word minority. And hence, in the Muslim majority region, the rights of the minority were never questioned. In fact, Jammu and Kashmir was the only state in India with no tribal rights. In 1957, thousands of Valmiki Dalits were brought from Punjab as government sweepers. Under Section 35A, they were not given an SC certificate and couldn't even get a government job other than sweeping. This barred them from availing any benefits listed under SC provisions. Revocation of Article 370 and Section 35A came with a big bang and a state of despondence for many. But for the right wing and several defenders of the Constitution, it was a decision taken too late. Now you know both sides of the story. What's your opinion?